All right, today we're gonna to build a 48 volt system using Lee Times 48 volt 60 amp hour battery, Victron's MPPT 120 charge controller, and Victron Phoenix 48 1200 inverter. And we're gonna place everything on this board, so let's do that now. All right, so obviously using cheesy camera tricks, you can build this system in record time. All right, so let's take a look at what we've got here. I went ahead and added a smart shunt. Now this is Victron's smart shunt. That way we'll know how much power is going in the battery, how much power is coming out, what state of charge is and everything like that. All right, now some people ask, what is the point of going with a 48 volt system? Really the efficiency and the scalability your parts don't have to be so huge. So like for example, this MPPT 120 is a 20 amp charge controller and you can get 1160 watts through it. Whereas with a lower voltage system like a 12 or a 24, this unit right here would be so much bigger. Um, you would have to go to a 40 amp if you were trying to get over 1100 watts on a 24 volt system and you'd have to be pushing like 80 amps, which would be a much larger charge controller, much more expensive if you were trying to do the same thing with a 12 volt system. All right, so let's go ahead and plug some solar into this unit. And let's pull up the app, and there it is right there. Okay, so we got zero watts coming in because we have not turned the solar on. There we go. Now we should have power coming in. We're showing 81 volts. Okay, so we've got about 450 some odd watts coming in. We can also pull up the smart shunt. So there we go. And we can see there's 430 watts going into the battery. The battery's not actually 100%. The smart shunt has just defaulted to 100%. Uh, so the battery is actually still charging. So we can just sit here and let this thing charge up. All right, you guys, so this battery is almost fully charged now because the charge controller is in absorption mode and it's only allowing in, you know, about 30 watts. So it's, it's pretty much close to being 100%. So what I want to do right now is I want to play around with the inverter. So let's turn the solar off and we'll look at the shunt. That way, when we turn the inverter on, we can see how much idle current it's drawing. Okay, so we see no power coming in or out of the battery. And the inverter has two modes. It has on or eco mode. So for right now, let's just turn it to the on mode. And we can see it is idling at 20 watts. Exactly. Uh, with nothing plugged in. Now the eco mode is supposed to make that idle go down real low because it does, it kind of shuts down and every once in a while comes back on to see if there's a load attached and then it will power all the way back up. So on eco mode the little power light here flashes meaning that it's it's gone into that low power mode and we can see it's only using about six watts so it's idling about six or seven watts. That's really awesome. All right, so while that's doing that, let's plug a load into the inverter and see how long it takes it for it to come on. Because like I said, when it's in that low power mode, it's not 100% on. It every once in a while powers down and then powers back up to see if there's anything. So let's plug in this heat gun and it's already on. And we'll see how long it takes for it to snap out of the low power mode. It's plugged in now. Okay, it was very quick. So we can see via the shunt, we're pulling 790 watts. We'll turn this off. We're down to 20 watts idle. And then now it immediately goes into that low power eco mode, back to six watts. That's awesome. So let's turn it back on. It's on now. Oh yeah, very quick. Yeah, so very quick it comes in and out of that eco mode. 
That's awesome. All right, so the next thing I want to do is I want to plug in the oscilloscope and see what the sine wave looks like. Okay, so I've got the oscilloscope plugged in, and as we can see, the sine wave pops in and out every once in a while. And that's because it's searching for a load. So it's, it's off, now it's briefly on, so it goes off and then briefly back on. That way it can remain in that low power mode and just popping on every once in a while seeing if there's a, a load that's available. So let's go ahead and turn this heat gun on. And there it is. It found that there was a load attached and it stays on the whole time now that it's detected a load. So we'll turn the load off. And we go back into that searching mode. Very neat. All right, guys. And another really neat thing that you can do with the Victron gear is you can basically wire them all together into a Victron Servo GX, which is kind of like a central brain, which pulls all the data in and it can display it all. It can also make it available remotely. And you can buy those from Victron, but you can also make your own because the Victron Venus OS is available for a Raspberry Pi. So you can just load it on a Raspberry Pi and you can get these cheap screens and then make basically make your own. <laughs> now one thing that you have to do is when you make your own you do have to buy their cables and actually I think there might be some instructions on how to make your own cables but I just buy their USB to VE direct cables. So it just has USB on one side and then the Victron VE direct. And all these devices have the VE direct port. So there's one for the inverter. We've got another cable for the solar charger. There we go. And then we got one more for the smart shunt. Now we just need to plug all these USB ends to the Raspberry Pi ports. Power up our Raspberry Pi with our Venus OS already loaded on it. I'll leave a link to the video that shows you how to build this. And so here we go. We've got our smart shunt showing up over here as the battery. And it's showing 99% state of charge. We've got our AC load, which is the inverter. And then we've got our PV charger, which is obviously is the PV charger. So I'm gonna hook up a load to the inverter. And then we'll see the wattage show up here. There we go. So we're showing 821 watts coming out. Uh, we got 510 watts coming in from PV. And uh, we're taking 400 watts out of the battery because we don't have quite enough PV to cover the AC load right now. All right, so what I wanna do right now is I wanna hook up this induction cooktop and I wanna kinda of max this system out so we can see if anything's getting hot, uh, anything you know weird happening, because that's what you wanna do whenever you build a system. You really wanna stress test it to make sure nothing's going to go wrong. So let's plug this guy in. Okay, so this thing's just beeping and it's not quite starting all the way up. And I think that's because of the eco mode. It's not drawing enough power initially for this to think there's a load there. Uh, really all we gotta do is just switch it to on, I think. There we go. And now we're in business. So let's start this. Let's go power level four to start with. Oh, that's actually almost perfect because it's showing 1,210 watts. So we're doing a little bit more than what this thing is really rated for. So we'll let it run like that. I think it, I, I bet it handles it fine. Now while that's running, I wanna show you the really neat thing about 48 volt. Let's check the amps. 
going into the inverter. So pretty much at full load, we're only using 23.6 amps. <laughs> so you don't really have to use giant wire or anything like that. It's so much more efficient. You know, if this was a 12 volt system, we would be pushing close to 100 amps right here. Now, the one thing that you do also have to keep in mind is whenever you go 48 volt, you can't use basic fuses any longer. You've got to use fuses that are rated for 48 volts, or actually I think they're rated for 58 volts. Uh, and Victron sells them. So you need to look for the ones that are rated for this, this voltage. You can't use the lower voltage fuses. Starting to boil there. Yeah, nothing is remotely getting warm. Now this might not work for everybody because you, you do have to have your PV voltage high enough to make it charge the battery. So if you've got 12 volt panels in parallel, that's not gonna work. You'd actually have to run uh, at least four 12 volt panels in series for it to work. Or you'd have to run two 24 volt panels in, in series uh, so that definitely keep that in mind if you were thinking about upgrading your system you would have to you know rewire your panels to be in in series but also not in series to where it's so high that it goes over the max voltage of your charge controller so you need to keep that in mind it's got to be below the max voltage of your charge controller but it's also got to be a certain level above your your max battery voltage so let's check some temps here We're showing 71 there. Just on the battery, 71, the wire doesn't even seem to be any hotter than what the actual battery is. You know, we're showing 68 on the desk here. And nothing, you know, nothing is even, even hot. And this thing is, this system is kind of maxed out. Looks like we got a little bit warmer here 75 but I think that's just the yeah that's like the heat coming out of the back of the inverter because there's yeah there's fans blowing through here uh, the charge controller is 80 84 <clears throat> the inverter itself is 79 80 yeah, I'm just going to let this run for a little while and I'll come back. All right, we've pretty much boiled all this water away. Showing 74, 77, 79. Yeah, so nothing massively hot. Also, the other thing that you guys need to know is that if you're going 48 volts, you need to be cautious about touching the terminals like this is actually high enough voltage to where it can shock you <laughs> so be cautious of that all right so let's turn this guy off i'll go ahead and unplug him and we got down to 91 percent stated charge and we've got 516 coming in from the pv charger we can go ahead and turn the inverter back on eco mode We'll save a little power. Yep, and we're just charging back up. All right, and lastly, I didn't really have room to throw this on the board, but it's it's always a good idea to put a main battery disconnect switch in your system. And the reason being is, if you're gonna perform maintenance on this type of system, you can turn the battery off and then you know you don't have any power running through and it just makes it safer to work on. You're not gonna short anything out. You're not going to potentially shock yourself. And the other use that it has is if this is going to be an RV or a van or something like that, uh, you can turn the system off for storage. So basically you can turn your PV off and you can turn your battery off and nothing's going to sit there and just drain everything down. All right, guys. So I think that's going to be it for the video. I'll leave links for you guys in the description. And as always, drop me something down there in the comments. Let me know what you think about this system and I'll catch you on the next one.